Another general shout out. Do you believe these applauses are for some new honors that are heaped on Caesar? Why, man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus, and we petty men walk under his legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonorable graves. Men at this time are masters of their fates. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. Brutus and Caesar. What should be in that name Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Write them together, and yours is as fair a name. Sound them, it doth become the mouth as well. Weigh them, it is as heavy. Conjure with them, Brutus will start a spirit as soon as Caesar. Now, in the names of all the gods at once, upon what meat doth this our Caesar feed that he has grown so great? Age, thou art shamed! Rome, thou hast lost the breed of noble bloods, when went there by an age since the great flood, but it was framed with more than one man. When they could say till now that talked of Rome, that her wide walls encompassed but one man, now does Rome indeed in room enough, when there is in it but only one man. Oh, you and I have heard our fathers say that there was once a Brutus that would have brooked the eternal devil to keep his state in Rome as easily as a king. That you do love me, I am nothing jealous. What you would work me to, I have some aim. How I have thought of this in these times I shall recount hereafter. For this present I would not so. So with love, I might entreat you, be any further moved. What you have said I will consider, and what you have to say, I will with patience hear, and find the time. Both meet to hear, and answer such high things. Till then, my noble friend, chew upon this. Brutus had rather be a villager than to repute himself a son of Rome under these hard conditions, as this time is like to lay upon us.